Well, this is Marlon Simon. Give you a little bit of background of where I've been and where I've come from. Uh, we're doing a duck soup kind of, we'll get it all done and put it together. Uh, I, was, I was born in Buffalo, New York, May 27th, 1938, at five something in the morning. My mother said I'd kept her up all night and then she finally had me. So uh, that was a happy day for them and a happy day for me. Uh, I had a, a really neat family. My mother and father were married in June 19th, 1937. And uh, they had me a, almost a year later. And uh, I had interesting grandparents, actually. All my family came from Germany. And basically everything I knew, they came over because of religious persecution. My grandfather on the Simon side of the family uh, came over at either 16 or 17 years old and was an evangelist and had pastored in uh, Seattle and the family ended up a lot of them in Minnesota and uh, those that weren't involved in ministry were involved in in uh, the army and other military aspects uh, on the Simon family we had uh, my great-grandfather had five kids and uh, my, grandfa my grandfather, Henry Simon, uh, also had four children, my dad being one of them. And on my mother's side of the family, I don't know a whole lot about, but I know that they came over from Germany and my, my great-grandfather was a policeman in New York City and I still have his, his billy club someplace packed into all my stuff. But I was named after my grandfather, uh, Marlon Henry Cook, K-O-C-H, and depending on which part of the family you come from, it's either Cook, Coke, or Coach. So uh, you can, but anyway, I'm a part of the Cook family on that side. Um, After I was born, my, my mother and father had my sister uh, on February 8th, 1940. And she and I were always very close growing up. And uh, we did a lot of moving when we were seven years old. When I was seven years old, uh, we moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And then uh, when I was eight years old, we moved to San Francisco, California. And when we were 10 years old, we all moved to Miami in uh, 1948. And then I lived in Miami for, uh, uh, to the years, uh, I actually went in the Navy in 1956. And in 1960, I was in college and my parents moved to the Keys and basically retired. And I didn't have any place else to use for an address, so I came down here and used use that address while I was still in college. Meanwhile, um, we had interesting experiences everywhere I lived. Life has always been an experience. It's been fun and all that, but I remember things from way back. I remember when my sister was born, and she was born 20 months after uh, I was. I remember the house that they, my parents had just built, or not built, had just bought and they were paying $25 a month for the mortgage on the house. My dad was earning $25 a week, coincidentally. And uh, those days, uh, I was pondering the, uh, a while ago what was going on in that. Of course, it was the end of the Depression. Uh, was well, still actually in the Depression times when, when I was born. And uh, years later, my mother was about 75, and I had a motorcycle and I go over to pick her up and I say hop on mom we're going out to eat lunch and I take her out to eat lunch and and I said uh, mom I still hate carrots and peas and she looked at me and she said well you don't you know why and I said I had no idea she said when you when you were born for the first few years we didn't have any any food in the house we raised our own chickens we had a, a garden 
and we had carrots and peas would grow real well. So she said, you ate a whole bunch of carrots and peas. I said, now it makes sense. Now I understand why I hate carrots and peas. And she said, oh, yeah, that's, that's basically all we had for food. And uh, thankfully, my dad uh, was, was a very uh, hardworking kind of guy. He had went through eight years of school and quit. Uh, his dad left the family and uh, never saw him again. We don't know where my grandfather ended up or what happened, but my dad had to go to work at, at uh, well, the eighth grade. What was that? About 13 years old, I guess, and help support the family. And uh, over the years, my dad got into sales, and he ended up uh, doing very well with that. And in sales management, he became the regional manager for Pitney Bowes, meter mail machines. And I remember during the war, uh, he transitioned from working with uh, selling linens, uh, towels and other stuff to, to different businesses. Uh, they, were, they had some kind of a, an operation where he was doing, doing that. He was out in the road trying to convince people to have wash rags and towels and that stuff in their businesses and their in their restrooms and so on and he ended up in getting involved with the Pitney Bowes metered mail machines and within a very short period of time became the branch manager for Buffalo and uh, then he was doing so well they asked him if he would do the Atlanta branch which was a m much bigger for the southeast it was the biggest they had and he, we did that for eight or nine months and then moved to California where he became the regional manager and uh, took over 62 offices out there. And uh, he, he was so aggressive with his work that he was always, always working with it. And uh, my dad was a very ethical and uh, loving kind of guy. And I remember him coming home one day, and of course I was about 10 years old, and he said to my, my mother, Eleanor, I quit. She said, good, because he was generally home about one or two days out of the month because he was flying continually all over the country uh, taking care of these offices. She said, good. And uh, he said, yep, I can't stand being away from you and I can't stand being away from the kids. And uh, she said, what are we going to do? He said, I don't know. Well, the, the company, Pitney Bowes, called him and said, you can't quit. And he said, yeah, I quit. And they said, we'll give you anything you want. You can come in and become a vice president. Uh, we'll do anything we want. We don't want to lose you. And he thought for a couple of days, and he said, I'll take the Miami branch. And uh, at th in those days, Miami was, um, was 117 out of 120 offices. It was right at the bottom of the, the totem pole, so to speak. Uh, it was one of the poorest, slowest offices, not making much money and all that. So we moved to Miami in September and by the end of the year, 1948, it was number three in the country. And from that time on for the next 15 years, it was either number one or number two in the country every year. But the incredible part is uh, he, he set records that can never be broken. I don't know how they'd ever be broken because every year they would increase his quota by 200 or 300 percent. One year it was 400 percent of the year before. And when you compound those percentages over 15 years, uh, and he was still exceeding the, the quota every year, he would go over the quota two or 300 percent of what it was before, the year before. And uh, he was working himself silly. And... Uh, he decided that uh, he'd go get a medical checkup. The doctor said, we'll give you five months to live if you keep living this way. And Pop says, uh, okay, I quit. <laughs> and uh, he ended up moving to the Keys, building a house down here. And uh, we bought that particular house back from the second owner in 1985, and we're still living in it. Uh, but anyway, Pop retired. 
and became one of the better known fishing guides for many years down here. The only passion he had besides sails was fishing and uh, he put all his effort into fishing. And I remember the guides calling him and saying, where are the fish going to be? Where, where are they moving to now? And Pop uh, watched the progress of, or not the progress, the direction that the fish would go, how they would move, uh, why they would move, what the weather would do to them, uh, you name it. And he, he sort of thought like a fish. And uh, he, w he was very good at that. And uh, he lived till he was almost 80 years old. And at, at the time he retired, I believe he was 58. And he was smoking five packs of cigarettes a day. And just, uh, well, he's working himself to death. And then that one doctor that said, you're going to kill yourself in five months, uh, he quit. So it's uh, interesting to look at life and where we go with it and what it's worth. And, and uh, Pop looked at everything. And anyway, uh, so where was I all in this? <laughs> uh, my family, where I was going, where I'm at. Uh, I had experiences in every place I lived. Life was always an experience. Uh, God has given us an incredible planet to live on with lots of stuff to do. And I have lived my life uh, knowing that God's in charge and He's going to give us the direction and guidance as we reach out to Him.